Yes, Lord. going to read a few verses of scripture and then we're going to pray and then we're going to get into a new series. Amen? Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 24. We're going to start at verse 44. If you are able to pull it up on whatever device you have, please do. And if not, it should be up here on the screen. Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 49. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. That though he suffered and died, he didn't stay there. Amen? We, I know Easter was last week, but we can rejoice about that all the time. Amen? Amen. Verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. Somebody say all nations. All nations. All nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I love you, Lord. Mm, Jesus, how I love you, Lord. Because you've been so good to me, Jesus. And Lord, here we are in your house one more time, undeserving. But you have brought us here to hear your holy word one more time. And I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness to us, oh God. I pray that you would give me what to say in this moment, Lord God. All I've got is a few minutes. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would anoint me in these few minutes to make an impact for eternity. Lord, that's what we're fighting for every Sunday, God. We're fighting in the few minutes for eternity. That somebody's heart will be changed. That their mind will be changed. That their actions will be changed. That their soul would be saved. And that they would be able to walk with you in heaven, Lord God. Help me, Lord. To say what you want me to say. And to do what you want me to do in Jesus' name. I give you all the glory and the praise. Somebody shout amen in the house of God. Amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. You may be seated. Amen. I love the Lord. Amen. I said, I love the Lord. Amen. I said, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord because he heard my cry. I love the Lord. He delivered me and he saved me and he turned me and he helped me. I love the Lord. My life belongs to Jesus. My, my time belongs to Jesus. My, my money belongs to Jesus. Everything I have belongs to Jesus. Because he loved me so. Amen. Because I was no good. Amen. I've got my family here to tell you I was no good. I was a liar, amen? Just lied for no reason. Lied because I could. I had a mouth, so I lied. But then I ran around and did crazy things in the world, amen? And I, then I tried to be what I thought was tough, amen? And I got myself in trouble and found that it was nothing but pain and heartache in the world. And, and while I was sitting in a cell by myself, the Lord Jesus, 
I said, the Lord Jesus, amen. He began to speak to me. He, he began to remind me of the stories I had heard and the, and the testimonies I had heard. And, and he wrapped me up and brought me out. And, and I'm standing here in front of you people. And I know I don't deserve to be here. I, I know I don't deserve to preach. I, I know I don't deserve to pastor. I, I know I don't deserve, but God, but God, somebody say, but God, I was wounded, but God, I was lost, but God, I was hurting, but God, but God, save me, he saved me, he saved me, he ain't got to give me no money, he saved me, he don't have to blow up the church, he saved me, he don't have to give me my job, he saved me. He don't do nothing else. He saved me. Amen. Why is that man always yelling? Because I'm in love with Jesus. I yell and I scream because I'm in love with Jesus. Because he did for me what nobody else could do for me. Changed my life. Amen. And I hope, I hope that's why you're here. Amen. I hope you didn't come here because somebody else was here. I hope you didn't come here to be seen. I hope you didn't come here because of the lights. I hope you didn't come here because of the... I know you didn't come here because of the building, praise the Lord. <laughs> Man, we, we making it work, y'all. We making it work. Hopefully you came for the Lord. <laughs> because Jesus has been good to you, amen? And every time you eat off of a plate, you can remember that the Lord's been good to you. And he put the food there, amen. And every time you put on your shoes, you recognize that God gave them to you. And every time you kiss your children goodnight, you know that God did it. And every time you drive to work, it's because God. Listen in the, to the testimony of Sister Teresa. How somebody dropped her off in front of a hospital door. But my God, look, she's here, amen. She's here in the house of God. And she's praising the Lord. Only God can do that. Y'all better stop that timer, y'all. Start that clock. Because I'm feeling froggy, and if y'all don't, we'll be here all day. Amen, amen. I know folks driving, y'all got to get home. I'm going to let you go, amen. <laughs> amen. All right, y'all, all right, all right, all right. I'm just, I'm just so grateful to be in God's house. Amen. This morning, this morning, and if the babies cry, don't worry about it. That's what babies do. Amen? Babies cry. That means they're alive. Amen? This morning, we're going to start a new series. Amen? We're going to start a new series called Wildfire. Amen? We're going to start a new series called Wildfire. Amen? There's going to be a series in the book of Acts. Amen? And we're going to just go through the book of Acts week by week, chapter by chapter, because there is something that I want to get across to you. God's people. Amen? I want to talk to you this morning about an entity, an entity, an entity. Amen? I want to talk to you about an entity that's more powerful than any other entity on the planet. Amen? I want to talk to you about an entity that's more powerful than any army, any government, any regime, any corporation or movement. Amen? I want to talk to you about something that's often misunderstood. Are misconstrued. I want to talk to you about an entity that's so powerful that Caesar's Rome couldn't stop it. I want to talk to you about an entity that was so powerful that Pharaoh's army couldn't stop it. And I don't care what entity tries to come up against it. I want to talk to you about an entity that's so powerful that Jesus said the gates of hell cannot prevail again. I want to talk to you this morning about the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, I think that people have a misconception of what the church is. And I want to help fix that this morning. Amen? The church is not a place where we come together and we hang out and we talk about who won the football game last week. Amen? The church is not a place of like-minded people where we get away from all those icky worldly folks. Y'all know how some church people are. Those icky worldly people. Amen? They're just so dirty and icky. Well, you were filthy and icky. Thank God that... That he brought you in. Amen. The church is not a place where we come together and we talk about other churches. 
Amen. The church is supposed to be a house of prayer. Amen. The church is supposed to be a place where you come and you gain strength. The church is supposed to be a governmental entity of heaven here on earth to do the will of God for God's people. Amen. I want to talk about the church. I want to talk about, are you a part of the church? Are you, are you a part of the church? I'm not talking about fam. I'm not talking about this building. Are you a part of the church? Are you one of the body? Are you one of the number? Are you a soldier in God's army? Are you moving with Christ? Are you a part of the church? I want to talk to you about the church. Amen? Because people, people have made the church something that Jesus didn't make the church, which I think is hilarious. Like, Jesus is the one that started all this. And then we're going to tell Jesus what the church is supposed to be. No, no, Jesus, the church is supposed No, you don't tell me what the church is. I tell you what the church is, and you just do what I tell you to do. Amen? And the reason I'm talking about wildfire, and, I, and I'm going to read through some notes because I can't remember all this off the top of my head. Amen? I'm human. <laughs> and the reason I called it wildfire is because that's what the church is supposed to be like. Amen? The church is supposed to be like a wildfire because a wildfire is an uncontrollable force that burns in the wildland vegetation often in rural areas it burns in forests and grasslands and savannas and other ecosystems it cannot be limited to a particular continent or environment a wildfire cannot be stifled or contained once it is started it will do what it will do and the church is supposed to be like a wildfire I know there's misconceptions of the church that we just come together and hang out but we are supposed to break out of this building get out of those streets and tell a dying world about Jesus Jesus Christ. Supposed to be a wildfire. See, and sometimes there's a misconception about what a wildfire is, but I want to let you know that a wildfire is essential to the continued survival of certain plants and species. Did you know that? That a wildfire is uh, essential. For example, there are some trees that won't release their seeds unless there is a wildfire. Did you know that? And man, the wildfire cleans uh, the floors of the forests and other areas so that there is room for more vegetation to grow. It burns other trees to let sunlight in that would allow for nutrients to be put into the dirt so that there are more growth that can come about. The wildfire is supposed to do good. Amen? Yes, some stuff gets burned up in the process. That's just what happens with fire but it's supposed to produce other things, amen? The, the, the church of Jesus Christ, uh, people have lost respect for it. They, they disrespect and they talk about it like it's just a bunch of hypocrites, but that's not what the church is supposed to be. And yes, there have been some hypocritical folks in the church, in suits, and ties, with the microphone, and the titles. And the cars and the houses and the rings and the clothes. There's some hypocrites on the stage and ain't living what they preaching. And that's the reason why people don't want to come into what they call the church. But that's the reason why the church is not a building. If we would get out of the building and live holy and be holy as he is holy, we won't have to have people come here. We can go. Anybody? Wait, wait. I'm, I'm going to make it real plain. I'm going to make it real plain. Anybody shop at the grocery store? You, you, do anybody do Walmart delivery? Anybody do Walmart? Anybody do Instacart? My wife got both hands up because we, we ain't going to the grocery store no more. I mean, you ain't never going to see me at Walmart or H-E-B. I'm never going again. Any, anybody, anybody do that? You get, a, you get a delivery or you pull up and they just deliver your stuff in your car. Anybody? You look, it's magic. It's magic. You pull up and all the food that you paid for is in your car. You know why? these companies are still surviving is because what they said is you don't, you don't have to come to us. We're going to come to you. I mean, you don't, you don't have to go to Pizza Hut no more. Pizza Hut say, I'll come to you. And I see, I, I wish the church would start to pick up on some of this stuff and say, hey, you don't have to come to a building. You don't have to come to a place. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to knock on your door and I'm going to go to your school and I'm going to go to the hospital where you're. I'm going to be the church outside outside of the building but we're too comfortable in the church we we like to sit in the partial air conditioning when it works amen and and relax inside the building but that's not 
what we're supposed to be. So this morning with 22 minutes and 41 seconds, y'all know that's a lot. I'm going to try to do three things. I'm going to try to answer three questions this morning. I want to talk about what the church is and is not, even though I touched on it a little bit. I want to talk about what the purpose of the church is. And I want to talk about what enables the church to fulfill its purpose. And I know some purists are standing out there saying, hmm, well, you got to tell the world that they are the world. You got to tell them when they're in sin. Yes, the Bible says to speak the truth in love. We tell them when they are in sin, but it's with loving kindness have I drawn them. You just got to show them that we are the church. Thank God you didn't have to be clean before Jesus came to you. Thank God you didn't have to be perfect before Jesus came to you. Thank God that he found you where you were, how you were, in the mess you were in, and loved you through the mess you were in. Though he was holy and pure and kind and righteous, he touched you in your dirty state, just like he did. The man with leprosy had never been touched, and Jesus reached out his hand and touched him and said, be clean. Thank God that Jesus ain't afraid of our leprosy. Thank God he ain't afraid of your leprosy or mine. The leprosy of lying, the leprosy of lust, the leprosy of sin. Thank God he was able to reach out and touch us in our leprous state. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be his hands and his feet in the earth. So again, what the church is and is not, what the purpose of the church is supposed to be, and what enables the church to fulfill that purpose. Ecclesia, ecclesia in the Greek is church. Amen. It's a Greek word which means, or ecclesiology, which is the study of the church. And it's actually two words. And somebody might be asking, Pastor Keith, why did we go to the book of Luke if we are going to be in a series on the book of Acts? Well, the church actually begins in the book of Acts, but Jesus is laying the foundational work at the end of the book of Luke. Luke and the book of Acts are actually one book. Well, they were written to be together. It wasn't supposed to be Luke. And then Acts, uh, what happened was logistically back in the day, they had scrolls. They would write on scrolls. And those scrolls were about 30 feet in length. 30 feet. And, you know, you had to try to put all that stuff. I don't know how they did it. But they had to put all that stuff on those scrolls. And, and so 30 feet was about as long as you could make it. So what happened was Luke, the physician, Luke, who walked with Paul, Luke, the apostle, he would uh, write the book of Luke and then he would continue the book of Acts. And so Luke and Acts are essentially to be together. And at the end of the book of Luke, we celebrated Easter last week. Jesus has been crucified, has been put in the tomb, has been raised from the dead. He reveals himself to the saints and asks them, give me some fish to eat. No, I'm serious. That's what happened. Jesus revealed himself to them and said, hey, I'm hungry. Y'all got something to eat? and ate some fish. That, that's where it ends in the book of Luke. And he tells them, as we read, he says, I want you people who are afraid, who are uh, being uh, abused by uh, the Roman Empire, you people who have now lost what seems to be your leader, who have been uh, cursed in a sense. I want you to come together, and I want you to wait here in Jerusalem. I'm going to send you some power so that you can do a few things. Amen? And this is Ecclesia. This is what happens uh, with the church. Is what the church is supposed to be. In Matthew 16 and 18, you don't have to go there. And I'm going to get to some other scriptures. Matthew 16 and 18, Jesus tells them, he says, uh, when Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, uh, he says that on this I will build my church. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church is not a building. Okay, let me repeat after me. The church, the church is, not is not a building. A building. Jamal, stand up. Where you at? Amen. Thank God for Jamal. Amen. Thank God for him. Tandra, stand up. Bianca, stand up. Amen? Can he stand up back there? That's the church. Y'all see the church? That's the church, and that's the church, and that's the church, and that's the church, and that's the reason why you got to be careful how you treat these people, because these people are the church. It ain't this building. We keep these buildings clean. We sweep them, and we mop them, and we take care of them, but these folks that you're looking at is the church. 
Now be careful. Y'all, please, I'm sorry, y'all. I can hear him right now. That's why I don't sit in the front. He always call us to do something. Amen. He said, upon this church, on this rock, I will build my church. Jesus is not building a building. Jesus ain't building no edifice. Jesus is building a movement. And man, he's building an entity, a people that's going to do his will in the earth. How do I know that that's what Jesus is building? I'm going to show you some letters, and I'm going to give you some, some points to these letters. Just real quick, real briefly, let's go to the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And I'm just showing you what the church is. The church is people. Amen? Look at what it says. It says, this letter is from Paul. Chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. Verse 2, we are writing to the building and temple, to the building at Colossae. No, we are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossae who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. May God our Father give you grace and peace. He is not writing to a building. He is writing to the people inside of whatever building. The church is people. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. You will see a theme here. It says, verse 1, this is a letter from Paul chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Jesus Christ. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Paul is not writing to the people at Ephesus, he's, uh, to the buildings, he's writing to the people. Amen? The church is a unified people with unique purpose endowed with a unique power. That's what the church is. Amen? The church is people. It's made up of people who love God and who want to do the will of God and fight for the purpose of God. People who understand that without God they would be lost. People who know that without Jesus they had no way out. People who recognize that they ain't better than everybody because without Jesus they would be where they used to be. So they don't judge folks or look down at folks. They walk with a certain humility because if it were not for Christ, there go I. Though The church recognizes who Jesus really is. Church. That's how you can tell, you know, you can tell when somebody ain't really a part of the church because they walk in pride. They ain't, they ain't never sinned. They, don't, they ain't never sinned. They just, they, they clothes is holy. They toenails is holy. And man, whatever color they paint them, the paint is holy. It's holy paint. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Huh? But, but a lot of them don't really understand what the church is when Jesus is talking to these people, you got to remember what has just occurred. Jesus died and they <laughs> took off. Peter done lied, cussed folks out. Come on, y'all, pre- come on, get in your word. Peter done lied multiple times. Multiple times Peter done lied. And then cussed somebody out because they identified him with Jesus. He began to curse and say, I don't know that man. I don't know him. And you got, you got people that's in there. We're going to get to this next week. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. You got people in there that are zealots. Y'all know what zealots are? Zealots were people that wanted to fight against the government. Uh-oh. We in Texas. <laughs> Come on, saints. Let's be holy. Uh, zealots. Huh? That, that was seen as a bad thing, right? You have people in there that were tax collectors and and so forth, you had women, culturally. They weren't supposed to be in there among those men like that. This is a group of people that were struggling, going through. I didn't know what was going on. Then the person that they watched be crucified and be buried shows up in the flesh. Now tell me you wouldn't be tripping. Tell me you wouldn't be tripping. If somebody you watched die, give up their last breath, be put in a grave, just showed up while y'all was cooking some fish at the house. Y'all act like this is normal. You having a fish fry on a Friday night after church, and all of a sudden somebody you watched go show up and say, hey, give me something to eat. What you gonna do? 
Some of y'all jumping out of windows and some of y'all taking the frying pan with the grease in it and throwing. Some of y'all don't know what to do. But this is what's going on here. Amen? Let, let, let me continue on what the church is not, okay? What the church is not. I heard uh, John Piper say that the church is a battleship, not a cruise ship. It's a battleship, not a cruise ship. Let, let me see that first picture. Let, let me show y'all the difference here real quick. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? That's, that's the largest cruise ship in the world right there. And, and I'm not getting on it. Amen? And I'm not getting on it. Praise the Lord. For those of you that want to get on that big old thing right there and float in the middle of the abyss, you go right ahead. But not me. I'm going to stay right on dry ground. Me and Jesus right over here on this. Amen. This, this is the largest. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just telling the truth. Don't ask me to go. On, don't. Hey, listen, church. You want to bless your pastor? Don't you buy me no cruise ticket. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm going to love you and I'm going to put it in a frame. I'm not going. <clears throat> Amen. This is the largest cruise ship in the world. This ship right here obviously floats on water. Amen. It, it can hold more than uh, 9,000 people. 20 decks high. 9,000 people on this thing. Huh? And the cheapest, the, the, uh, I think the rate for one person is about $1,500 a week. I did the math. They make about $7 million a week, around $190 million a year. This thing's got everything, y'all. It's got a water park. It's got water slides. It's got uh, in-house in entertainment, like movie theaters. All this stuff. They got all-you-can-eat buffets. Now, as long as the ship don't go in the water, if we can just get on and do the buffet thing and get back off, I'm good. Amen? I want some fake crab meat, too. Amen? That, that's, okay, let me, get, let me get the next picture. Let me show y'all the next picture. I got 10 minutes, y'all. I'm going to move. I'm gonna, give me the next picture. Look, look at this thing. Look at that. It's like a carnival on the water. Do y'all know that this thing, like I said, 10,000 people, that's bigger than Marlin. That's, that's more people than Marlin. Amen. That, that's uh, bigger than Woodway, Brownsville, Commerce, Hillsboro, Lampasas, or Nolanville, where you're going to get your ticket if you drive it too fast. Uh, the police hide behind telephone poles in Nolanville. I'm telling you right now, they like cartoon characters. They can hide behind anything. Uh, it has six water slides, seven women swimming pools, ice skating rink, 40 restaurants. That's, that's a cruise ship. And why are you showing us this? I'm showing you this because a lot of people think that's what the church is. What, 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 what programs do you have? Oh, here we go. Let me preach, y'all. Let me preach. Let me get on my sober. What programs do you have? And, and, and what, what is there for single ladies? And what is there for single men? And what is there for, what can we do? Y'all, I'm telling you, the church has become nothing more than like a restaurant because now I was telling the leaders, you can leave a review on Yelp. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all act like y'all know what I'm saying. You can get on Yelp and talk about the church and leave a review like it's the food at Bucky's. I slipped up and went there, y'all, for the gas and then uh, got a sandwich. It was $10. Don't do it. Don't go. Amen. People, people look at the church like it's a cruise ship. But let me show you what the church is supposed to look like. This, this is, the, this is uh, 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 the USS Gerald R. Ford. Hmm? The largest aircraft carrier in the world. Got F-35 fighter jets on that thing that can carry up to 14,000 pounds of ammunition. 6,000 sailors ready to defend their, their country at a moment's notice. This is what the church is supposed to be. It's not a cruise ship. The church is a battleship that's supposed to be ready to do warfare should the enemy happen to bring that. You want the smoke? We're going to give you all the smoke you want. You Satan, the gates of hell, you want to try to come in? We're supposed to say, bring the smoke then. Shots fired. Let's do it. Let's handle it. 
You want, you want this? Come and get this. I'm going to give you all you can handle. Give me the next picture. See, the church, as big as it is, is not alone. This is what I love about the USS Fort. It's not by itself. It's sitting in the middle. But on the sides, you got some warships that's ready as well. Hey, uh, you want to you you attack our aircraft carrier? Go ahead and try it. Because we got about 10 other warships that's surrounding this bad boy. So you're going to have to deal with them. We got submarines surrounding this thing. You're going to have to deal with them. We got soldiers here. You're going to have to deal with them. We got pilots. You're going to have to deal with them. See, the church is not a cruise ship. It's a battleship. And if my sister going through, I'm supposed to step up. And if my brother going through, I'm supposed to step up. And when you sick, I'm supposed to be praying. You want to bring it? Bring it on. Church is not a cruise ship where you come and you sit and you eat and you go home and say how fun it was and how nice it looked. You're supposed to come in here with your boots on and have your fatigues on and have your weapon ready. And you're supposed to have your warfare. You're supposed to be ready to come do battle on this thing. That's what the church is supposed to be about, y'all. But with all that armor and all those weapons, uh, see that? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. Amen. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We are supposed to be a church that fights with prayer, compassion, patience, love, huh? discipleship, commitment to the things of God. Amen. Pastor Keith, you said you're going to show us three things. You have made it through one. Y'all help me. Y'all pray for me. Amen. Now, I'm going I'm to get through the purpose of the church. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 24, the purpose of the church. Luke chapter 24, we're going to start at verse 45. The purpose of the church. It says, Luke 24, 45. We're going to go through 48. It says, then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. They've been walking with Jesus all this time, and he still had to open their understanding to understand the scriptures. You ain't going to get it all day one. Amen? You get saved, you ain't going to get it all day one. How come I don't live like that? It's going to take a minute. Give it a minute. It's called sanctification. It's a process. Amen? He said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remissions of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. Here is the purpose of the church, that we can preach repentance and remissions of sin to all nations, not to America, not to other, all, the other, uh, all nations. I don't care what color you are. I don't care where you come from. We are supposed to preach repentance and remission of sins to all nations. God bless America and everywhere else. Amen? That's what the church is supposed to be about. He said, I want you to go and preach to everybody. Oh, it's quiet. It's quiet. Do, y do I have some folks that don't agree with what Jesus said? This is not me. Jesus said. Amen? That's what we're supposed to be. And he says, verse 48, and be witnesses. You are witnesses of these things. Huh? Huh? Matthew chapter 16, I'm going to read verse 19. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I got about four minutes, y'all, moving quick. Matthew 16, 19, what the church is supposed to be, the purpose of the church. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We have authority in the earth. We are supposed to bind some things and loose some things in the name of Jesus. Let me make, let me make a quick pit stop here to get some theological, uh, to bring some theological understanding because I think there's a misconception about what it means to bind and loose. I've been hearing binding and loosing my whole life, and I think people have hijacked that to mean something it doesn't actually mean. It does not mean that you and your human authority tell God what to do in heaven and in earth. Amen? You are not saying, God, bind him up there. That's, you know what I'm saying? Because God is all sovereign king and lord and 
you and where you are. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Amen. And so you don't tell God what to bind and what to loose. What you are doing is getting in, agree or was getting in agreement with God. And you're saying, God, whatever things are not pleasing to you that are in the earth, I bind those things that you would want bound. And I loose those things that you would want loose. I come into agreement with you. That's what the, uh, hey, Jesus, get up and go get the map. That's not what's happening. Uh, that's not what's going on. But some people have made binding. I loose that Mercedes Benz in Jesus. Ha! That's not. Listen, and come on, saints. God ain't telling us to loose no Mercedes Benz, all right? God say, go to work, get your financing, and then your bank gonna make them loose it. <laughs> Amen. Oh, it's quiet. That's okay. Listen, I love y'all anyway. I love y'all anyway. I know y'all love me too. Amen. Now, I got about one minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to this. What enables the church to fulfill its purpose? And like I said, we're going to be going through this week after week. And then I'll give you a little bit more of what the next few weeks are going to look like. But let's go to the book of uh, Luke again. And man, we're going to go to, you should be already there in 24. And I'm going to read verse 49. This is how, how, Pastor Keith, does the church fulfill its purpose Luke 24 and 49, it says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. To, but tarry ye here in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. The reason why you got a lot of people in the church that's mean and cantankerous and frustrated is because they're trying to do the purpose of the church without the power that's needed to do the purpose of the church. You got to have some power from on high to put up with a bunch of people. Because listen, I'm a pastor, but some people, can I be honest with you? I hear you, some of you like, is it Lord, is it I? Some people. Pastor Key love everybody. But some people with this suit on <laughs> get on my nerves. <laughs> Can I just be? I love them. I love them. They tap dance on my nerves. Amen? Some people come into the house of God to test you. You don't think it happens? The scribes and Pharisees did it to Jesus all the time. Some people are not coming here to hear the word. Some people are coming here to try to pick holes in my theology and then get online and say stuff to me and give me phone calls. And so sometimes I don't really like to see certain people. My flesh be saying one thing and the spirit be saying something else. The flesh be saying, slap him. <laughs> and the spirit be saying, bless him. Bless him, amen. Bless him. Bless them that curse you. Bless him. Be kind to him. Bless him. Remember, you are part of the church. Remember, you are a soldier in God's army. Remember, you are an ambassador for Christ. Remember, don't get out of character. Don't let the world see you because they're going to judge God according to your behavior. I want to tell him, hey, y'all go home, please. But the power of the Holy Ghost. Are y'all laughing? Y'all, I'm telling you right now. Some folks, some folks, you know. But the Holy Ghost. You, you might not, you might not think it applies. How many of you got a job to go to tomorrow? Raise your hand. Guess what? You are gonna need the power to go to work tomorrow. Huh? When you walk in that, in that cafeteria or that that lunchroom and old messy Jim is sitting there. Amen. You're going to need the Holy Ghost to deal with old messy Jim. Amen. You're going to need power from on high to continue being a witness unto Jesus Christ. See, because you can't get mixed up in the mess and still call yourself the church because then you have become a hypocrite and a stumbling block to the very church you say you are a part of. You wonder why people don't want to come to this place. You just cussed them out on 31st Street. <laughs> you cut them off, you drove in, parked, jumped out, checked your kids in, and they see you and they say, you know what, I'm going to the one down the street. <laughs> That's why, like I said, we don't have no bumper stickers, t-shirts, keychains, nothing to identify some of us with the church. <laughs> Amen? Because I want to make sure we really be in the church. Amen? 
You need, so the church is not a cruise ship. What is the church? It's not a cruise ship. It's a battleship. Amen? Amen. We have been endowed with power uh, to do the purpose. What is the purpose? The purpose is to be witnesses and to preach remission of sins and repentance to all nations, to people that we like and that we don't like. As you continue on, you will see he says to preach to them in Samaria, which is full of Samaritans, which were considered half-breeds who hated the Jews and the Jews hated them. It's got to go beyond racial lines. It's got to go beyond uh, uh, educational. It's got to go beyond well how can we do that the Holy Ghost the power helps us to do it you don't gotta vote like I vote for me to love you and to show the love of God to you you don't have to agree with everything I think theologically or otherwise but I am supposed to as the church love you and treat you with the love of God anyway like a wildfire this thing is supposed to spread y'all it's supposed to touch everything. It's supposed to clear out stuff that ain't supposed to be there. And it's supposed to make way for new things to be birthed out. Be a wildfire wherever you go. When you go to HEB, be a wildfire. I mean, when you go to the, the, the restaurant today to get your chicken or to get your you know, your burrito, wherever you're going to go, your Chinese food, be a wildfire there, amen? You say, well, Pastor Keith, they are atheists. What better person to be a wildfire to than an atheist? They, they say they're agnostic. What better person to show the love of God to? Pastor Keith, they cussed me out. What greater opportunity do you have to show the love? I can't show God's love unless you treat me wrong. Because where the feelings end is where real love begins. So when you disrespect me, you think it's going to make me run away. But see, I'm like a firefighter. I don't run from the fire. I run to it. So the more you disrespect me, the more opportunities you're giving me to show you who Christ is. The more you cuss me out, the more opportunities you're giving me to bless you. And the more I do that in the name of God, I will begin to build up for myself treasures in heaven that moth cannot corrupt and rust cannot corrupt and thieves can break in and steal because I mean, I'm a part of the wildfire, which is the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? I'm done. Put your hands together for Jesus. I'm finished. 35 minutes. I'm getting better. Amen? Amen. I thank God for each of you. Amen? Let me do this too while I have a minute. Amen, son. That's my son. Y'all, he talking to me. We, we've been praying lately. We've been praying. We've been going to the corner. And then the other day, my son said, dear Lord. <laughs> Amen. I say, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Amen. If he going to talk, amen. If he going to talk, Lord, let him talk about you, Jesus. If he can't say nothing else, let him talk about you, Jesus. He don't know nothing else. Let him talk about you. So I thank God for my son, amen, and my wife that's always working with him. And while I'm here, she's working with him. I thank God for them, amen. But also, real quick, while I have a minute, amen, I want to thank God for my sister Cupid. Stand up, Cupid. Stand up, Cupid. Pastor Key says, stand up, Cupid. Oh, I pulled rank on her. You can sit down now. You look good too, girl. You look good. That's, that's my older sister. The Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. Amen. Every chance I see my sister in the house of God, I'm going to tell her tell her how much my sister dropped out of school to take care of my brothers and sisters. She was 13 or 14 years old. She would cook and clean and make sure we did our homework. My sister, I thank God for you. I owe her so much I can't repay everything that she's poured into my life. Thank God for her being here, my nieces and my nephew. I mean, that's his helmet that's on my shelf back there. My nephew Chase, that's his helmet. Amen. And my niece Danielle, who's going to run the world. 
Danielle going to run the world. She's going to be the next president, I think. Amen. I thank God for my little sister Constance being here. Amen. Y'all remember Constance? Firm but fair. Man, yes, you can have some coffee tomorrow. That's my little sister and my brother-in-law, Donnie. Thank God for him taking care of his family. Always been a provider for his family. Quiet. Amen. But a provider. Took care of my nieces and nephew, and I thank God for him being here. Just wanted to give them that acknowledgement. Amen. And also, all of our visitors. Let's thank God for all of our visitors here. I'm doing stuff all out of order. But this morning, I want to give those of you, you may plenty of you, plenty of you, we're, we're done. I want to give an opportunity to somebody that is not saved to come and join this wildfire we have. If you want to be a part of that battleship I showed you, Jesus is ready and willing with open arms to receive you this morning. Amen? And it does not matter what you did before you walked in this building. And it does not matter how bad you think you are. And it does not matter how many times you have sinned or what sins you have committed. Jesus and the blood of Jesus is able to wash you and make you white as snow. And the same Jesus will love you through every fall and every trip and every mistake you make from here into eternity. This Jesus will love you unconditionally. Where man will turn their back on you, this Jesus will stand with you. So I want to open it up to anybody that is not saved. Saved. You haven't given your life to Jesus. You're not walking with him in unity. You're not surrendered to his authority. You're doing your own thing because that's all you've known. That's all you've ever done. That's where you're most comfortable. And you don't feel like it's possible for you to be. But I'm telling you that Jesus can make it possible. What's impossible for man is not impossible with God. 